Welcome back to Conversations of a Different Kind. I'm Yvonne Perry, your host today, and Brenda Williams is going to be uh, helping me to understand and explain to all of us about a bone in the brain that is an energy transmitter. It influences our connection with the body systems and with higher realms. It's now being used to restore Trinity balanced into the earth, fed through the divine feminine principle. So we want to talk about this today and find out more about the spinoid. Am I saying that right? Spinoid. Spinoid uh, bone. Bone in the brain. Well, bone in the Brenda. <laughs> Tell us all about it. <laughs> well, it was very interesting to me on several levels. First of all, back in the early days with Quiet Miracles, uh, the logo was Millie the Butterfly. When I would explain to people where I was experiencing these changes that were taking place, it was always in what I refer to as the hypothalamic axis, the pineal pituitary and the hypothalamus. But I didn't know there was a butterfly bone in my brain. I didn't know the physiology. Uh, that's, that's really pretty much come around fairly recently. Um, but it was interesting to, to realize that I had been talking about the same, this is what I've been talking about for 30 years. We're now being able to define it a little bit more. Um, the other part of it was back in the day when things were a little covert in my life, uh, my code name was Butterfly. My email address is triad.butterfly. Um, so I began to, what I'm understanding is that what's happening is that all of these different components of our experience, my experiential vocabulary, is now beginning to come together and it only speaks in one way now. It doesn't just speak about the physiology. It doesn't just speak about the, the, the spirituality. It doesn't just speak about the physics of it. We have it all contained in this incredible human form dressed up in a skin suit that's able to pick up all of these signals, this movement, where does it go? And how does the sphenoid bone connect all of this? And that was the magic. Um, I think we talked maybe as we were working with the reset breath and quiet touch in 18 inches about the merging now of the ancient chakra system. Well, it goes all the way up and out Mm -hmm. all the way down and into the earth. That's what the tube is. That's what the 18 inches is. What does that mean with re reference to what we're talking about now? We are literally self-contained in this physical to move through these next changes and this influx of vibrational frequencies. We're prepared. We just have to use what's in our physical toolbox. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what we're you know, beginning to talk about now. Yeah, it's very interesting that so many people are wanting to be out of body, um, astral travel, move into higher realms, and it's like, how can you ascend a body if you're not in it? Don't we want to ascend our body, and isn't this one of the tools that we're given in order to be able to do that? Well, remember the old phrase, um, no child left behind? Uh -huh. Well, back in the day, early days of quite a uh, before actually before quiet miracles when i was just beginning <clears throat> the first thing that i actually took notice of that i heard and i'm going where did that come from was help my children to remember mm. it's time to bring the children home and i've told the story before that uh excuse me but i was a grandmother uh you know you, i don't want to work with children i'm enjoying my <laughs> grand i only had one at the time <laughs> um and, and it was like, I don't think I want to go back to working with children. So what do you mean? Well, we are the children. Mm -hmm. We are the children. And we're bringing back the memory and the remembrance of our, what some call the inner child. Mm -hmm. That little, little Brenda Jane that got caged a long time ago mm -hmm. is breaking out and saying, no, I'm here to be free. I'm here to be expressive. I'm here to share that excitement and that intuition and that, that freedom and that flexibility, but more importantly, that authenticity and that curiosity of a child. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're coming back now to understanding how to utilize the gift we were given as we were being created in the womb, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. We just sort of lost it and got it dancing in the personality mm -hmm. and forgot to close the gap. Mm -hmm. And I'm here now to close the gap for mm -hmm. myself. And if this, you know, is something that someone else can benefit from, then it's, it's time for it. Yeah. It's here. Let's use it. Let's, Let's use share it. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's share it. <laughs> so I've got a sheet that you sent me about this, uh, Sphenoid bone. Am I doing it right? <laughs> okay. Probably all it wrong. I don't know. Tell me a little it's bit about S-P-H-E-N-O-I-D. <laughs> oh, I-D. Okay. There we go. Noid. So, uh, Noid. Okay. And we can look that up on, on the internet if we want to find a little bit more information about what it actually um, does in scientific Okay, it's scientific uh, things, but we're going to apply this to not only the scientific and the biology, but how it connects us with higher realms. I'm, I noticed Absolutely. here, 60, 70, 90s. Uh, I'm, let's go for it. Tell me about this. Um, what, if my experiential uh, excursion into this journey uh, was very purposeful because all of this information either metaphysically, physiologically, uh, biology, the physics of this was, was known for a long time. Mm -hmm. But in order to be able to speak about it and experience it, we have to feel it. And right now people are feeling a lot of things, correct? Mm -hmm. Well, I can remember a little bit about what that was like because I'm still having some experiences feeling the changes that are taking place, <clears throat> particularly in the, in the, the head back in the day it would feel like being in one of these old english libraries that there's a ladder because the, the books are way mm -hmm. high mm -hmm. and the, so you move the ladder around yeah <laughs> the way i explained the physiology back in the day was that it felt like i was being files were being shifted and changed around ah oh, different <laughs> <laughs> so i was experiencing then movement so the key to understanding how any of this works is back again to recognizing, being still, noticing movement. It's not just what you say. It's not just what you do. It's back again to what are you feeling? Mm. So as we begin to move around, and, and again, I'm, I'm another we person, you know, we is all of these parts of me that had this experience that most people are having aware or unaware of. <clears throat> but part of the part of the the wave the triad wave as it came in was that it asked me to experience at different levels the first level was understanding the movement of the planet not when she just exploded or when she was quiet but understanding that she was like that sine wave mm. she moved mm -hmm. and so to understand how to move fluidly the second part of it was oh my I'm going to be going in and out of my body. Oops. I, you know, I would lose time. I would lose moments and I would have no recollection. So the second segment of the wave was, no, you need to, you need to have recollection of that. You need to understand that you are moving. It's not about escaping. You're moving. You want to collect the wisdom of that movement bring it consciously and began to share it with other people. Well, that didn't happen for 20 years. <laughs> the sharing it with other people part in the way that we're talking about. But what's interesting is how do these key components in this sphenoid area, because it actually houses and collects. It's there. Remember we talked about the parietal lobe, I believe at one of the last conversations. <clears throat> The parietal lobe is part of, it's all connected into the sphenoid, but the sphenoid allows it to move out because remember butterfly wings, butterfly wings move out. So it's sort of the housing and the collection place of the pituitary. There are your hormones. That's what's giving you calm oxytocin to the brain with, with a quiet touch the right hand down on, on the lower abdomen. Mm -hmm. It also allows that movement of that oxytocin to then connect to the pineal gland, mm -hmm. which is where we house our higher consciousness, or so it has been thought and talked about by the ancients forever. I happen to think it's probably true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <clears throat> because you can, you can begin to feel that. 
What about the hypothalamus? How does those three components that were right there in that little segment working together come to understand movement through the multiverse, dimensional realities, because it requires all of them to work together. The pituitary connects with those higher dimensions. The pineal, I mean, the pineal connects to the higher dimensions. The pituitary gives you that sense of safety with the oxytocin that it's okay. Mm -hmm. You're gonna come back and be in your body and be able to do the work because we don't live out there anymore. It's not gonna do you any good out there. We can't get our work done here. The hypothalamus then recognizes and communicates with all of the other systems in the body through the vagal system that says, I want you all to pay attention because we're going to need you to come on board because she's getting ready to go for a ride. Mm. We all want to pay attention. How does that relate then to the different, um, different dimensional realities? In metaphysics, we, we know, and even with Kalaman's work, we have gone through nine waves of existence in our evolution. We have a chakra system that works in a similar way. We given, we've given all of these names and definitions to things. How do they work together? What's the difference between the ninth wave and, and, and a soul chakra? What's the difference? Um, how, do, how do we communicate those together? What does it mean if you're living in a tube? an 18 inch tube because the activity is happening in that tube mm -hmm. it's happening in that very specific area of communication that is enclosed in this human form and yet why do we look at it outside uh, that's the thing and that's what causes all of our troubles really is looking at things outside and thinking that's our reality rather than creating our reality and living that it's more like um we're letting life out there control what we think and feel and believe when we're not connected really with, with what's going on in here in the body and in this tube that you're talking about. Right. And when people are communicating in your vernacular with light language, mm. there's so much focus on what they're saying and why can't I understand it sometimes. Mm -hmm. interpretation. Yeah. Let's bring it into the 18 inches mm -hmm. because you know, you feel it. Mm -hmm. You may not be able to translate it in words all the time, but you feel it. Mm -hmm. Where are you feeling it? And it's back to this, what um, Elisa Renee, I believe, is, talks about the triad patterning between the sixth, seventh, uh, and ninth dimension. And she words it specifically. And when I read that, it was like, she's absolutely correct based on the biology that I understand, how I understand this triad actually works. The ninth link is to the hypothalamus, which is encompassing and, and sort of regulating all the, all the body systems to say, hey, we can bring it all in here. Hmm. And if I'm with someone who is speaking light language, enjoy the beauty of the cadence and the flow of the words, but feel inside because your body will interpret yeah. what you're hearing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's across the board with everything. Yeah. And, and a lot of people are afraid of feeling, both physically and emotionally. Uh, light language asks you to do both. It, it gives you the opportunity to do both. A lot of people say they feel a lot of energy moving in the heart, Others say in the head. So there is some connection here between the heart and the head that goes on with light language that I'm not able to explain. <laughs> but I, I can work and let you explain it. <laughs> but I think we can because remember in the 18 inch tube, we're connect we're making the connection between the vagus, which which is sending signals, everything that's going on outside and everything that's going on inside. And it connects then to the heart, not the heart muscle. And some people want to say, well, let's just connect to the high heart. You're connecting to, to this center. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're connecting to a lot of things. You are connecting to your actual beating heart, but in a different way, in a little bit different way. All of those then are connecting to the brain through this butterfly that is now connecting these systems and say, we need to speak one language. Uh, there was a friend many, many years ago, Mary Elizabeth Hoffman, 
um, and she's an astrologer. I think she's up in Washington State, um, still doing great work. But she had said to me a long time ago that part of part of what this work is about is bringing it all into one vernacular and she called it the third point of synthesis mm. and i remember thinking i remember that because it's so significant but we're always talking in the in the threes triad. the three-legged triad. stool the triangle the whole the whole thing the triad wave everything is in threes because that's what closes that specific surface of that 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 signal of our evolution mm. But the third point of synthesis is where we're actually giving it a common language. It's the next level of communication between conversations of a different kind. Mm -hmm. We're taking what you know, what I know, we're communicating about it, and we're creating a whole new holistic version of both of our languages, mm -hmm. how we communicate with one another. Mm -hmm. That's what community is about. It's bridging all of the things that we, uh, we find difficult because you talk one way, I talk one way. Mm -hmm. I don't understand, so no, I won't bother. Right. Rather than I'll having the away. courage, rather than having the courage to ask questions, uh, have a conversation, and it doesn't have to be an argument. It's like, what are we saying that's the same thing? We're just using different words. And we got into that in our conversations of a different kind. But I think it's very important to be able to find that commonality, especially in what we're going through right now when there's so much fighting and warring out there. If we could just come to that place within ourselves and just center into our being like you're talking about and then have those conversations. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's the only place resolution will occur is in a resonant field mm. where we might still be using our own language. But what we're doing is immediately when you say something, my first always step is, do I have, do I have a, a pushback to that? Oh. Is there something about that that gives me pause? Mm -hmm. A good pause or a not so good pause, mm -hmm. you know, a pushback or a say, oh, bring it in. Yeah. Uh, it's noticing the movement and how it affects how we perceive what's taking place. Mm -hmm. And when we begin to take that moment during all conversations to listen, not just with our ears, but with that 18 inches, mm -hmm. with our whole beingness, oh, yeah. yes. and notice, and when something comes up that says, oh, well, I don't understand that, ask a question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or open the dialogue a little bit deeper. But what we do is we, as a whole, and what we've done, I think, in the past is just kind of, okay, well, let's just move on past that because I don't understand it. Mm -hmm. And that was always the, the phrase I would hear. I have no idea what you're saying, so I'm just not going to listen. However, I feel something when I'm there, mm -hmm. and but I don't know what it is. We don't know how to take the time to explain because we're trying to justify mm. why, our, why we're well, saying why we're our saying. point is better than theirs. Yeah. Our <laughs> point is uh, we're trying to um, sort of make excuses for, well, you know, I've been doing it this way and you've been doing it that way and you know, it's okay. And it is each experiential um, process journey is critical because within every part of that, we always have to go back to the beginning. And that's the morphogenesis. Mm. Instead of working with our personality, our genetic predisposition mm -hmm. to, to work with the, what we've been taught, told, and shown, let's go back one step further. Let's go back to what we know. Not what we know because someone showed it to us or told it to us. Why do these words that Lisa Renee puts out make sense to me? Because immediately they connect to what I know. I can tell you years ago, I would not have listened to a word anybody like that said. <laughs> Metaphysics was not my area of even, <clears throat> woo woo was not where I would go. But do you see the connecting wisdom within all avenues of our dialogue right now? Mm -hmm. Who are you talking to? Well, my version of that is I'm talking to everybody because we're all human beings 
holding a divine spark and we have work to do on the planet. Mm -hmm. So how do we bring in all this incredible information and put it in a format that everybody can begin to experience that our diversity is our strength. Let's go learn. Oh, I don't need to take a class to find the resonance, mm -hmm. but I need to be willing to take the pause and explore it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it's not, that's not my job. However, I have to be aware of it and be able to communicate it because I'm going to run into somebody that it is their job. And how can we talk about it without separating us even more? Yeah. That's the morphogenesis. Mm -hmm. It's saying, mm -mm, we all start at the same place and we all return to the same place mm -hmm. because we all carry that spark of the beginning. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's just my version of reality. And, and I believe that because this pineal um, part of the sphenoid, part of our actual physicality is our connection to higher consciousness. Mm. We're still looking at creating it in a way that isn't connected, mm. not connected. I'm going to be spiritual. No. I'm going to be physical. Mm. Oh, sometimes I'm going to be intellectual. Why can't I be all three? All that. Yes. Yes, totally. Yeah. So does this make any sense at all? I mean, are, how, where are we, you know, where are we in this? Well, yes, it does. It makes a lot of sense. Um, I, for so long, when I was raised in, in the, the church, there was secular and there was sacred. And I don't know where or who devised that line, <laughs> where that came from, but we had rules and you needed to stay on this side and don't dabble in with the secular side. And they made it very clear where that line was. To me, every word, every thought, every breath is a prayer, a prayer, a communication with source and spirit within me. This relationship with God or source, whatever you want to call it, is not out there somewhere. It's not in a book. It's not in rules or doctrine. It's in my field. It's in my 18 inches. How can I be separate from that? unless I choose to ignore it and feel that separation and pretend that separation is there, put the line and you stay over there and I stay over here. Yeah. It's bringing it back into the old, uh, old understanding of, you know, at first new age was I am God. Well, part of that's true. Part of that is true. Uh, you know, but I'm not God. No, I was created and I'm part of that spark. But unless I'm communicating from that higher awareness in that cadence of, of vocabulary that everyone that comes into contact, that I come into contact with can feel, mm -hmm. then I'm not representing that spark in a way that is holy. Mm. Well, none of us want to be taken as, as the be all do all. Because none of us are. I'm still cooking. I'm still learning things every day. Yes. This last week, I don't know about you, but this last week has been a jump <laughs> big for me. <laughs> All of a sudden, it has given me that. Uh, I heard one of the astrologers talking about it's purely psychological. This week, the planets are lined up, and it's going to delve deep into your psyche right now. Mm -hmm. And it's, a, it's that emotional connection to how did I get to be this way? I've been working on a blog now for almost that whole week uh, based on this book that I, I think I told you about, the book Untamed by yes. Glennon Doyle. I got mm. it. <laughs> did you get it? Oh, my... It's next up. <laughs> well, well, I'm still, on, I'm still you know, I've, I've spent a whole week in the first 23 pages. <laughs> But what I have learned about myself in that, or let me rephrase that, not what I've learned, it's what I've reconnected with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's what I've reconnected with, that part of me that was shut down, even the, the little picture that I posted on the website of little Brenda Jane with her watermelon at my grandmother's back in one of those treasured visions back then. I've so lost that, that mm -hmm. freedom to mm. just express myself because I spent 30 years living a secret. Mm. 
almost 30 years living a secret. Couldn't talk about it. Couldn't tell anybody. God forbid anybody knew what I was doing. Um, and I look back at it now. I remember the first time I actually went into the journals some years back. I've always been afraid to look at them because I thought if anybody ever reads them, they'll lock me in a padded cell. <laughs> Not true. Not true. But my perception of that experience and my actual experience were two different things. They weren't aligned. Mm -hmm. The beauty of it was amazing. Yes, some of it was pretty difficult and some of it was not pretty. But the reality of it is that it was so relevant to this past week mm. of beginning to reconnect again with that, that uh, intuitive part of me that that part of me that knew, that childlike curiosity, all of those things we talk about in the steps going through RBQT 18 inches and understanding the trivector human. We were so specifically created to communicate all of this, to house all of this, mm -hmm. and to be the walking expression of this mm -hmm. on the planet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In all of our uniqueness, in all of our little idiosyncrasies, in all of our diversity, because that's what freedom and autonomy and sovereignty is about. Mm -hmm. And yet, what have we done? Well, if I can't do it like you, or if I can't do it because I'm a Twiggy or whatever, whatever, you know, or heaven forbid I should do it in a room that all you see is the pillow on my bed that's a butterfly in my gray wall. Well, I'm, I'm in transit. So all of my things that usually hang on my wall and I don't travel with them anymore mm -hmm. so my room is is now plastic uh, um, little things from the Walmart that hold my clothes <laughs> because that's irrelevant to me as long as I have a place to put my clothes that's all I need right now mm -hmm. well that doesn't mean that's what everybody needs right Right. It's, it's where are you in your own expression of yourself? Mm -hmm. and, and are you beginning now to loose, loosen the bonds that you have put on yourself to be who you really yes. are? Yes, yes, that is vital. Let's go there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. This may end up being three podcasts because I tell you what. I want to talk more about this, uh, the bone, the butterfly bone in the head, but I also wanted to I talk think we more probably about already, we, we brought that up. Anybody can go Google that. Yeah, yeah. And they can learn. Anybody can go on Lisa Renee's uh, yeah. website. Yeah. I can put a link to that. Okay. It, it's, it, and that's the title of it, the sphenoid bone. Okay. It's it it phenomenal. Yeah. That was the bridge between metaphysics and what the physiology, the biology, and the physics of, of, the, of all of my work. Okay. All right. So I'll put a link then to Lisa Renee and they can learn more about all of That's the phenomena. But I feel spirit moving us to talk more about what we were on, this train of thought about finding our authentic self. <clears throat> and I also feel like we have something to say and spirit has something to say through us about the divine feminine principle that is coming in. So why don't we take this and say, okay, we're done with the bone. <laughs> The butterfly okay. is flying. We are doing our, our little butterfly dance in the brain, and it's doing all these wonderful things in our body. And we are connected with Source, and we are part of Source. And now let's move into this part where we are authentically expressing who we are as Source. Mm 